Hey, how's it going, YouTube? It's been a while since I talked to you. A lot of things have happened since then. Uh, I apologize for having no videos up in a long time now. I just got really busy and a little discouraged, to tell you the truth. Uh, let's see, update. Quick and dirty here. What's been going on? Well, of course, we're still in COVID. I don't know about your community, but my community just locked back down here in California. We're, we're locking all back down again. So I apologize again uh, about the air conditioner noise, but it's really hot here, so I'm going to do it with that. Also, uh, the video that I'm supposed to be shooting is still on hold. We did have a meeting last week. We're going to try to still shoot that pretty soon. And that's for the song that we've already had mixed and mastered called uh, New Day Dawning. And so since then, I've also done a few other songs. I submitted two songs, one called Arcade and another called Revival to, to uh, two stock libraries. Pond5 accepted, accepted them and Ivatu, of course, rejected them. And both of them. <laughs> so I don't know. We, we, I, I uh, am still going through the classes, right? I, I have the classes from Full Circle Music and the ones from Daniel's about stock music licensing, licensing. I completed his whole course. It's pretty cheap. It was only like $150 for the whole course. Uh, $179, I think it was, or something like that. He writes back when I write him. But have I been able to really actually submit any music that passed through stock music licensing as a result of his class? Not yet. I haven't sold anything, you know. So I don't know. Was it a waste of time? I don't know. We'll see. Might have been a waste of time and money. But uh, he's a nice enough guy. Teaches all right. So, you know, I'm just going to count it up for education. Full circle, I'm, I'm only about a quarter of the way through that class. I got a little bit disenchanted with uh, just the whole music scene, you know, everything. You know, the, the uh, we're so flooded. I mean, everybody's getting the music out there. So, you know, for those of us that have uh, been in it for 20 years like me, hey, it's just as much of a struggle for me as it is for the guy that's a weekend, you know, and, and I've actually seen guys that are weekend, they get more views and more publicity and more, you know, whatever. So I guess it comes down to whether you're doing it for yourself or you're doing it, you know, for popularity and making money. So of course, if you're going to do it for pop popularity or making money and you're not getting either one of those things, you're going to quit. But if you're doing it for yourself, it's going to know, of course, the, uh, the camera just ran out of space and I had to adjust things. So. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, so... Okay, so as far as the workout stuff goes on the workout channel, haven't been doing any of that. I did get a new treadmill, got it all set up. All the gyms closed down, haven't been working out. I'll have to start doing it again. You know, the, the goal and stuff. All right, so today, I thought I have since written two more songs. One is an orchestral piece and um, called Life and Measure. And it was written with music notation, all in Muse score, and then copied over to Logic Pro and remixed there. Mixed not in traditional fashion, but in orchestral fashion. So it's mixed in a way that if you were sitting in front of the orchestra, the, you hear the instruments from where they would be in the orchestra. So that's pretty cool. And then uh, then I've been working on this other piece that I call My Best Friend. Right? And I thought maybe today we would go over that because it's pretty amazing the way I, I done it in Ableton Live with all the automation, the automa automated forward, forwarding. And uh, so let's spend a little bit of time on that. And... Uh, also, we're going to go over real quick three, three main things that you should have before you put your music, upload your music anywhere. And one, you should have your 
ISRC numbers assigned and your UPC numbers assigned and two you should have them uploaded to both the your your content streaming areas uh, that are security like sound exchange or whatever uh, your affiliated company is uh, BMI or I'm ASCAP and sound exchange so that's where I register them so both those things logged and registered before you upload and then the third thing you should do is that you should have a snippet for a lot of the sites that you might use, like Reverb Nation, that uh, that say that they are they are exclusive, meaning that if you upload your music to their site, that you can't upload it anywhere. But a workaround for that is you can upload a snippet of the song, right? And and you can still use your Reverb Nation and those sites that that uh, are exclusive, but only re preview your song. And, uh, and then you can upload, of course, to your sites that are non-exclusive. I use, I think, Sound, uh, Sound Trader. Am I happy with them? Well, it costs $40, $50 a year for the pro account. Haven't made any money from their account at all. But they've, you know, uh, well, I can't say that, 50 cents. <laughs> so, I don't know. Uh, the next song, my my next major release again that I'm going to do the the uh, the New Day Dawning release is gonna, not going to be released on Sound Trader. It's going to be released through Distro, Distro Kid and see if there's a change there. All right, so let's check out the stuff on the computer. And oh, a couple other changes that I made since the last time we talked. Uh, I had to upgrade the computer, so now I'm running a 12 core and I'm running Sierra, and I don't have, I think I only have like 32 gigs of RAM right now. I haven't been able to upgrade the RAM yet uh, because my plugins started requiring at least 10.2, 10.12, which is Sierra. And uh, so I had no choice. I had to I had to get rid of the 1.1, 1 .1, 1, upgraded to comma one, the eight core with, what was it? 64 gigs of RAM that I ran forever. You know, well, not forever, for a while. Uh, I really loved that that computer. It worked well for me for many years. But I had to go to Sierra, and the only way to go to Sierra was to have uh, 5.1, 5.1 at least. And so I found one for $500, and uh, that's what we're using now. We got 12 cores, 32 gigs of RAM, and I'm running Sierra. So that was the other main update and upgrade. All right, so enough with all that. Let's check out the stuff online. Okay, so the last recording didn't work, so now I gotta do a new one. Okay, so you go here for your ISRC codes. You go to usisrc.org and you put in your information here and apply for codes and you get a code, right? And basically what you get let me see if I can back up here a little bit so you can see is a number like this okay so this number this is your number that you're actually purchasing this will be the the country code which you don't necessarily have to buy a, a code that for your country but I don't think mine is actually a US code it might be though but this one is the main number right here this is the year and this is the song right here right so literally you could have 99,999 songs in one year on your IR ISRC code so after that so you, you put make sure you get that and then you also get US UP, UPC codes now UPC codes you can usually buy them um, in different places but there are some places that are cheaper because they bought like lump sums when they first came out um, I think I paid and you can get bar barcodes with them to uh, Amazon buy UPC codes let's see here and so here here you go so uh, for a hundred of them 45 bucks 45 cents each now I recommend 
purchasing your U UPC code and then assigning it and putting it on your, your track before you upload along with your ISRC and keeping the one code. However, uh, Song Trader or Sound Song Trader, it's called not Sound Trader, Song Trader or Distro Kid or all those, they will assign a UPC code to you, your music when you distribute it. Uh, you can, you, there's usually a link or an area where you click, has this been sold before? You just simply click there and you put your own UPC code in and that way you can track it that way on your own code. And it's better than tracking their code because, in my opinion, because it sort of puts it, you don't end up with a bunch of different codes for your one piece of music. All right, so there's those. Um, you purchase those, you put them inside. If you have a, uh, now let me show you what I'm talking about here. Let me see if I can. Metadata. <laughs> okay. So here in Audacity, we'll bring up metadata and see I have it all in there already. Um, I don't know why it's not showing up right there. It is. You see all my rights, my, and then even my UPC is there too. You don't see it, but it's there along with my address, my email address, and my phone number. All inside of the metadata for the song. So you do all that before you load it, before you, you, you get, get it all ready to load. And then you go to whichever your affiliate is, mine's ASCAP or sound, uh, many people have BMI, there's several of them, you have to look at them. One's for, now you gotta think about what they're for, ASCAP, BMI, they're gonna uh, pay, pay you money for if your song is used in movies or if it's used in commercials or if it's used in any kind of thing like that, that's how you get royalties from there. If it's used on a digital source, like a web page or something like that, then that's gonna be sound exchange. It's gonna get your royalties that way. Okay, so supposedly, supposedly. So, there we go. All right, so, now, Let's look at this real quick. Uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick preview of um, the one song that I did, wherever it is. I think it's right here. So you can see. Here we go. You can see uh, I wrote it all out in music notation. And that one will be my next release probably. I have a little bit more work to do on it. And uh, it'll be an orchestral piece. And I sort of enjoy composing music like that. All right, so there's that one. And today, here we are in arrangement view of Ableton Live. And it's uncommon for people to write in this view, right? So. But I like to write in this view. It's a little different. It's loop based. And here, typically, you could, over here on the left, on the bottom, you could use this follow action to create things to go just about anywhere after they're done. The only problem is that when it triggers that way, it doesn't always trigger with the effects there or anything that you like on it. So the best way to trigger is to trigger from the master scene selection over here on the right. So what I do is I come over here and I create an automation channel. And that automation channel inside of it is one note that is registered to over to so if I click MIDI here for a second see each note is registered to create a play action on this master so here we go
So the power of this is that you can select any scene at any moment and it will play, of course, that scene. So you could actually, if you write this way, you can actually, in a live setting, uh, make this song last for hours and hours and hours, however long you want. Uh, just going over the song really quick, just to, just to go over it, let's see what we have here. Uh, so we have guitar tracks. Let's see. I, I pulled something out of... Uh, some samples here these are all samples that I pulled out of here this is uh, the Korg uh, Korg uh, 80s set you know with the with the wave station there a piano and um, looks like I'm using uh, the play piano East West East West play piano which is my favorite for pianos Bass guitar. I'm using Contact Five Player bass bass guitar for the main bass guitar sound, and then I use a massive to back it up, massive keyboard, and then I have this bass synth that comes in and out that's out of Omnisphere. Uh, vocals, of course, that's just the vocals chain, and then uh, this is some backup stuff, and the slicer I didn't use. I was going to, but I haven't, and then um, Ovox. I don't know what this is. Got me. Huh. I have it turned down, so. Ah, there we go. <laughs> it's for harmony. Right, so we have Ovox Harmony. And then we have another Harmony Engine. Some effects. Guitar 1 and 2. Which are, look like, are they loops? Yeah, they're, they're loops. And drum loops. That's a loop also, obviously. Omnisphere again. So that's two Omnisphere channels. Uh, a 606 kick. And um, I didn't use this, obviously. This was a, a track that I, I didn't use, but I used the Inspiration. So some stuff out of John Sines gear, out of one of his sample packs, an 808 long kick, a pad, and then the automation. All right, and I was just to organize it all. So if I was to just play one of these, I could come down here, or come up here. If I stop clicking because it's on the automation, it'll just pick up and go all the way to the end of the song.
right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Eddie, uh, if I I can click all of around all I want, and if I ever stopped manually clicking, it would just pick up where at that point in the song and finish to the end. And then uh, of course the the end automation hits the shut off right here. All right. So that is my best friend, which is going to be out officially officially released I think on the 29th of July whoops that's not what I wanted two weeks from Friday two weeks from Friday officially it's already up and out though you can uh, hear it in in different spots I think it's on music supervisor it's available on sound song trader right now to listen to I'll probably upload something on to uh, uh, one of the other sound trader or sound whatever something who knows it's only a little song but just for fun but I didn't want to put it into the stock library because I didn't like like the idea of this song going there so all right that's it you're all caught up so three things you get your UPC numbers and your ISRC numbers into the metadata of your music make sure you register with your affiliate people before you upload and make sure that you have your files ready uh, remember if you're going to stock library you have to have a ton more files you have 60 second cut 30 second cut 10 second cut or 15 second cut you know or and then a snippet and then uh, whatever like five different versions right if you're going with the stock library all zipped but if you're going for regular royalties then you avoid all that and just do what I said and and uh, you're good so we'll talk to you later Hopefully this one worked, yeah?